Lakers are the world champions. The Lakers have won it again. For decades, Michael Cooper has helped build a tradition of excellence in Los Angeles. There's the buzzer. The LA Sparks are the new champions of the WNBA. That's all I've ever known here in Los Angeles is to win a championship. And I mean, right now, these ladies know what it takes. As head coach of the WNBA's Los Angeles Sparks, Michael is applying the lessons learned with the Lakers, teaching his team the essence of championship basketball. For me, being a local girl and being in Inglewood when Coach Cooper actually played at the Forum is really exciting for me to be able to work with him every day. He's taught me so much in such a short period of time about the game. You gotta do a defensive stop. No three right now. This is what we're about. Southern California has always been home for Cooper. He starred at Pasadena High School, and ironically, he patterned his game after a member of the Lakers' arch rivals, the Boston Celtics. My idol growing up was John Havlicek. He was willing to do whatever it took for his ball club to win. That was my thinking coming into the NBA, is just doing what I can for the Lakers. On a team with future Hall of Famers Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and James Worthy, it was up to Cooper to provide the intangibles that were crucial to the Lakers' success. He was one of the first role players in the NBA who didn't care if he scored or not, did what the team needed to win. My main goal right now is to make the first team all defensive team. Uh, then my next goal after that is to stay on that until I retire. He received all defensive honors eight times, and he took it upon himself to shut down the opponent's top score. He had an aura about him the gunslinger mentality from the old west he's trying to send a message you know to the the opponent that he's about to lock up steal by cooper well you can see that one happening you can see the eyes of cooper there was some sort of uh sickness in high inside of him that enjoyed frustrating people when they're out there on the court he didn't give you the easy basket you knew when you, you were going to go against the Lakers and Cooper was going to guard you, it was going to be a rough night. The zest that he had when it came to taking the challenge to stop somebody, he really wanted to stop somebody. Bird, Cooper right with him. Well, Cooper's like a winter coat on Bird. In the Lakers' epic battles against Boston, it was Cooper who drew the unenviable task of trying to stop Larry Bird, who would later call Cooper the toughest defender he ever faced. Leading up to the Boston confrontation, I would think to myself when I'm playing, hey, I'm guarding Larry Bird, I gotta be at my best. Cooper and Bird are still getting to know each other. They can put on the same jersey. They were very physical games. There was always a lot of pushing and shoving. Matter of fact, I'm sweating right now in my arms because those were some great rivalries there. But Cooper's importance went far beyond defense. His intensity and savvy made him an asset in every phase of the game. The fact that he was thinking primarily about defense and making stops and rebounding the ball and taking charges and all of those things made him a better player. He was a better offensive player. He was my backup point guard to handle the ball. Cooper going all the way. Hey, yeah. The basket counts and a foul. He brings it out about the Cooper. Three-pointer. He was that igniter off the bench. Anytime you'd uh, see him come off the bench and the crowd would start yelling, coo, coo, coo. Cooper had me on my feet. He was, he was hot. He was blazing hot. The ball to Magic. Double drive. Down the middle. Out to Cook. 18-footer. Good! Well, I know y'all been waiting on the man of the hour. So, uh, I guess I'm... You needed another assist. I came up here to touch oh, oh. Well, Irvin and I go back to 1979 when we first came in the league together. I had been in a year prior, but I was injured, and then he came in, so it was like we kind of clicked. With Magic's ball handling and Cooper's athleticism, the two developed a high-flying play that became a signature part of Showtime. The Cooper loop, the pass where he Magic would throw it in the air, and I would go sailing by, catch it, and slam dunk it. Magic and I were thinking about a way where I could use my leaping ability. I just kind of looked at Magic, and he knew exactly what I was going to do. And I backdoored my man, and all of a sudden, you know, he throws the ball in the air. Alley -oop. They call that the Koopaloop here in Los Angeles. And when
when he goes up in the air, I mean, you are talking serious levitation. Now Michael Cooper has become the link between the glory years of the Lakers and the rise of the Sparks. He may not have received the accolades of his more celebrated teammates, but he will always have a well-deserved place in L.A.'s basketball lore. Without a doubt, he was one of the great players that I've ever coached and, and a real integral part of our championship run. Being a Laker is having a lot of heart, a lot of smarts, and wanting to do whatever it takes to win. Michael